hub. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna start over again. All right, so we have nine days, I don't have to count now. We have nine days left to this challenge. Go so fast. Um, every challenge goes fast. I don't know, care if it's, they used to be six weeks and they used to go super fast. Then I bumped it to seven. Then all new people are in for eight, but you guys are still seven. So it just goes really fast for me and for you because I feel like I don't have time goes so fast for me to get everybody ready. Um, so I noticed that people need to remember nine days. It's all you have left. So you want to buckle down and get it done, whatever your goal was for this last seven weeks. And if you did it already, awesome, exceed your expectations. You're not done. Um, but what I also see, and I'm so sorry, but I'm so thirsty today. I've literally taught four spin classes because of the filming I had to do this afternoon. So I'm so, and we're not gonna have water on the bike or a towel for sweat. So I was like totally dehydrated. Um, so the number one in talking about that, I overexercise. So do not use me as an example about what I'm about to talk about because people will say, but you do it, but it's my job and my body's used to it. So the number one thing I see besides not being able to stay focused is overexercising. Raise your hand if you don't think you are overexercising. Raise your hand if you possibly could be overexercising. So when I was doing this, Cheryl, I love you to death. And I love that you're in every one of my freaking classes. But when I was doing this, I was thinking to myself, on Monday, Cheryl took my 45 minute spin class, stayed for my 30 minute chisel class, and then came and did my Accelerate, which is a cardio killer class for 45 minutes. It, I mean, in a row, like there was no recovery. In my defense, that was just a special occasion because you were teaching that class and it was just like, I knew it was going to be extra fun. I would not have done that like on an ordinary basis, believe and, me. Yeah, and I would not have let you do that anyway. <laughs> um, but, and I know it was special and I love that you were there and it was freaking awesome. And I love seeing you in all my classes. However, if it was on the norm, that would be over-exercising, right? Um, so I'm gonna talk about a couple of things. I'm gonna list a few things. And then I'm gonna ask you the question again. Could you, if you had said yes to any of these questions or any of these statements, be an over-exerciser? And then I'm gonna tell you what over-exercising is. And then I'm gonna tell you how to stop it. Because let me tell you one thing. You cannot out-exercise a bad diet. You can't store fitness. You can't, you had a shitty day on Sunday and you ate pizza. And now on Monday, you're going to work it off. It doesn't work like that. Your body doesn't understand that. So you guys, you know, messaging me, um, you know, I, I didn't get to work out yesterday. So I'm going to double up today. Like why? Don't do that. So here, I'm going to tell you a couple of things. So sometimes when we work out too much and we overexercise, it backfires on us. So the number one certain things, you can't perform at the same level as you did not overexercising. So I'm using Cheryl again as an example, and I'm sorry, Cheryl, but she killed it in the spin class. By the time she got to accelerate, she probably was giving 60%. Why do like why put yourself in that position? I'm not really using you as an example, but I'm using an example. So why would you do that? If you're working out in the morning and you killed it, why are you going back in the afternoon to do it again? You're not going to be that same consistency of energy level. And on that note, Brian is not in this conversation either because Brian's training for like a 10,000 mile run. So he has to overexercise and I give him a lot of food. And he still can't get it because he's not trying to lose weight. He's trying to keep it up. Um, okay. Are you feeling tired? You get sleep, you're eating all your food, but you are tired all the time. And I know Lauren and I were doing something and we were like, oh my God, we are so done. We were exhausted. We were bitchy. We were not happy people. We were trying to do like this whole outside exercise, inside exercise. We were like trying to be like super fitness people and it backfired on us. And we were like, done. This is not, why are we doing this? 
So we were tired. I mean, we didn't even want to talk to each other because we were so tired. Um, and we talk every day. Um, if you find yourself getting depressed, you know, you're normally a happy person, but you're feeling a little bit more depressed than you normally would. Um, you're having mood swings or you're irritable. Hello, that was me also. Um, and having trouble sleeping is a number one sign of over-exercising. Um, I know I over-exercise, but I have no problem sleeping. If I put my head down right now, right here, I would be knocked out and you couldn't wake me up until the morning. I could sleep anywhere. I could sleep standing up. I could sleep in my car. I sleep everywhere. I do sleep everywhere. Um, that sounds really bad, but I literally sleep everywhere. Um, but if you have trouble going to sleep, usually it means you shouldn't be working out at night. Um, even if it's always been your thing, you might want to change that. Um, if your limbs are feeling heavy, so you can be sore. Sore is a good thing. And sore is not a bad thing. Um, and I was training Barbara. I trained Barbara privately on Zoom, but she also goes to the Mondays and Sundays workouts. And she said on Monday, her legs were so sore. She literally touched her hip. And she couldn't even touch her hip because she was so sore. I think it's because of the leg lifts we were doing with the bands. Um, that's okay. But if you are so sore that if someone like touches you and you're like, ah, don't touch me, I'm sore. That usually means you're over-exercising. Um, if you're walk, you can't lift your arm. You know, it's so heavy. Your legs, you feel like you're like thunder thighs. Um, not one workout, but obviously if you're working out throughout the week, that's over-exercising. Um, if you're continuously getting injured, I see this all the time. I'm not going to name where I see it, but I see it every day. Oh, I hurt my shoulder. Oh, my back is killing me. Oh, my knees bother me. Oh, my shins hurt. Oh, my heel hurts. On a daily basis, I hear it about four times at a specific place. And it's because these people think that they should be coming to this specific place seven days a week. And it's not necessary. I'm going to get to what is necessary and what's not necessary. Um, are you losing motivation? Oh, I got to work out again. I just worked out yesterday. Then don't work out that day. If you're not going to give 100%, take the day off. When I calculate your macros, it's an entire seven days. That's why I ask you, and I ask people this a lot if I see stuff changing. How many hours a week are you exercising? All right, tell me now, how many hours a week are you exercising? Because if I start to see a low or I start to see more than you should be, I need to adjust. So um, I get a lot of people that message me, not a lot of people, I get people message me and say they're hungry. Well, if you're hungry, you're, you don't have enough food. But why don't you have enough food? How much are you exercising and comparatively to what you told me? So someone today, she messaged me and she's like, I'm star, oh, yesterday, last night, I'm starving and I ate all my macros and it was like, literally, she was at zero, zero and two. So I couldn't even say eat something except tuna, plain, because she could have gone under that 10 macros, you know, I let you guys go over 10. Um, but I don't want her hungry. I don't want any of you hungry. That's not the point. You're not on a diet. So I was like, tell me exactly how many days you're working out. What are you doing? And she said, I work out every day, twice a day. I'm like, that's crazy. If I couldn't, if I didn't have to do that, I wouldn't do it. Um, and then she said, sometimes more, which is what prompted me to make, talk about the meeting today because you don't need to do that. People that say they're at the gym for two hours are wasting time. They're on their phone, they're talking, they're walking around the gym, they're going to the bathroom, they're coming out. A lot of times you ask somebody, how long are you at the gym for? Two hours, okay, but how long were you actually working out for, right? Because I can go to the gym. I worked out. So I taught spin this morning. When I got done, I went into the gym park before I had to go to Orange Theory because I always have time to kill. And I banged out bi um, biceps and back in under 40 minutes. I did four exercises each, which is all you need. And I was out the door by seven o'clock. And I'm done with my spin class at like 6.15. So it's walking from the gym, from the spin room into the gym. If you focus on your workout, there's no reason to be at the gym for two hours lifting weights. 
you are over exercising. You are doing way too many exercises per body part. You do not need to do more than four exercises per body part. I don't care if you're bulking. I don't care if you're cutting. I don't care. There's no such thing as trying to get tone. Um, but if you're, it, it doesn't matter who you are or what you're doing. You do not need more than four exercises per body part. Otherwise you're over exercising. Um, and if you're staying at the gym for a long period of time makes you not motivated because then you feel like, oh my God, I got to go to the gym. That's going to take two hours out of my day. How am I going to get all my stuff done? Blah, blah, blah. But if you block 45 minutes, you're like, oh, I can bang this out 45 minutes. I'm done. I used to train I, when I was training Lauren, 30 minutes. That's it. My private clients, they're like, how long are we going to train for an hour? I'm like, no, you don't need an hour. I'm not going to charge you for an hour. 30 minutes. We're done. We work. We get it done and you're done. And that's all you need to do. Um, if you start to notice yourself getting more cold, it's because you're over exercising and you're breaking down your immune system. Exercise is supposed to build up your immune system. Exercise is supposed to make you feel good. So if you're continuously getting cold, it could be a sign that you're over exercising. Um, and if you're feeling anxiety, and when I say feeling anxiety, if you feel like, if you have anxiety, oh my God, I didn't get to the gym today. What am I going to do? I'm going to gain on my way back. That's because you've totally centered your new life around fitness. And it should not be like that. Your new life should be centered around eating healthy. And fitness is a tool to help you lose your weight. Anybody, anybody can lose weight with only nutrition and never moving their bodies. Everybody cannot lose weight and exercise every day, all day. Do you know what that means? That nutrition is the only thing that will actually help you lose weight. So when you are planning your week and you're like, oh, I need to get in, you know, at least seven hours of fitness, bring it back. Do something else. Go get a pedicure. Go get a manicure. Do self, um, what is it called? Self, a self day, whatever it's called. Take care of you. And I'm going to go into other things. So I want you to raise your hand. If any of those things I mentioned could possibly apply to you. There's no way it's two people. There's no way it's me and one other person. Three, four. Okay, so the people that have their hands up and that are being honest and the people that are, don't have their hands up and they're not being honest with themselves, um, try to take one full rest day. Now raise your hand for the people that just had their hands up. Do you take whole, honestly, not a walk around city place, Lauren, not... <laughs> Not, I'm going to do a yoga class. Raise your hand for the people that said that they can answer yes to any of those things. Do you take one full rest day? 100%. One, one, one camera, because there's three of you in there. One Zoom said yes. I don't. And I tell myself, I'm, I, there's no way for me to do it. But you need to take one rest day. Make it a you day. Pull out a book. Exercise your mind. Um, hopefully the ones that are not telling the truth to themselves or to me have a full one day of rest or two um, because that's how you regroup. That's how you um, bring it back to yourself. So you can, over, you can avoid over-exercising by listening to your body and getting enough rest. I am so overheated right now because of all those been classes I just taught before I came home. I could feel like my temperature, like my thermal temperature going up. Do I look like I'm sweating still? I am. They make you do the rides without breaks in between. You literally get like five minutes to like the person comes over and like, like packs the sweat down, takes the sweat off your thing, fixes your ponytail, puts the mic back on and you get back on the bike. It's crazy. I don't know how the Peloton instructors do it every day. All right. So 
we talk about this all the time. A way that you can counteract over exercising if you totally can do it is drinking your water. I didn't realize till today, and I drink a gallon of water a day that I was dehydrated teaching those classes. The, there's a guy that talks to you in a mic. And the, so one mic has a guy that talks to you, the producer. And then one guy, uh, one ear has music. And I was riding and he gives you instructions like camera right, camera left, camera A, camera B. So you know where you're supposed to be looking. And he talks into the mic and he goes, without making it obvious, take your hand and wipe away your mouth because you look like you have cotton mouth. And I was like, oh, cause I'm fucking dehydrated. Like we're not allowed to have water on the bike or anywhere. Like when you get off the bike after 30 minutes, you can have it. Um, and I didn't realize how I got so dehydrated so fast. So I know for me, I need to drink more water. If you tend to get dry mouth or cotton mouth or any of that, make sure you are increasing your water. Maybe you need more than what you're actually drinking. Um, and that will help if you're over-exercising. Um, if you are feeling under the weather, if you are feeling stressed, if you feel anything that you don't normally feel, do not work out that day. Stop yourself. The world's not going to end. Shannon's not going to call you out and be like, why didn't you work out today? A lot of people message me and say, I know you saw I didn't work out. I don't see when you don't work out. I see when you work out. Right? I could, every time you guys work out, I have a long list. of Everybody that, every, every, every single person. So I can see what you guys are doing. So Jolyn did a fitness class for an hour and two minutes. Awesome. Robin did an exercise session. You know, Jody hit her 10K steps. Like Leah did a yoga session. I see what every single person does in the app. Everything you guys do, I can see. When you breathe, I can see it. So I just, it, I don't need to know that you didn't work out unless you are sick. And then I'll tell you, definitely don't work out. Stay hydrated, you know, feed yourself. Don't even track your macros. It's not worth it. You got to feed your body to get better. Get your sleep. So um, I know I use myself as an example a lot, but Burn Fitness, where I used to work, they closed their doors on Tuesday. They're not open anymore. And that was my Monday morning. I had to get, be up at like four. And um, Thursday mornings, I had to be up at four. And now that they're not open anymore, I don't have to be up at four anymore. So I am not replacing those classes. I'm going to sleep in until 5.30 which gives me another hour and a half onto my sleep, which I go to bed at 10. So that'll give me like seven and a half hours sleep. That's almost eight hours, right? I'm going to start to see, and you guys are going to notice my body changing more because I'm actually going to get more sleep and I'll have more energy and I'll be happier. Not that I'm not happy. I'm always happy, but I'll have more perkiness um, if it's possible. Uh, so try to make changes to sleep more. Um, I know there's so many programs that are like, wake up at 3 a.m. if you have to, to get your workout. And if you can't do it, this is the time to do it. And get up before your kids get up. No, because that's going to make you miserable. If, it, if you don't want to do it, don't do that. It's not, that, it, it is not worth it. I can change your macros and make them less. Um, for those that take the 5 a.m.ers, Melissa, Alicia, Caitlin, you guys, Make sure you're going to bed early enough so that when you're waking up for 4.30 to get to Orange Theory on time or four o'clock, whatever time you guys get up, that you have that six to eight hours of sleep. Because then you're working out, you're going the whole day and then you're coming back and you're going, starting a whole cycle over again. That's over-exercising. Um, always rest for six hours in between your exercise sessions. Don't use me as an example, just you guys in regular life, always six hours. So if you were to take a class at 6 p.m. at night, you can definitely do it in the morning. You've, you've given your body that time for rest and you want to fill your body with um, water for, for, um, to, to make it heal. Um, another thing is aminos. Aminos, BCAAs, whatever you want to call them, are anybody can take them. There's nothing wrong with it. They don't give you jitters. It's nothing like that. BCAAs is branch chain amino acids. You need that for muscle recovery. Lauren's holding hers up. You need those for muscle recovery. You need those for your muscles to grow. Your body needs those. And if you're not getting enough of them in your foods, which we don't, you just buy powder and put a scoop of it in your drink. 
they sell it like, you know, the um, collagen we buy. I know a lot of us buy the same one. It's the Vita collagen that has no flavor that we put two scoops in our water, whatever, however you put it in. So every morning I take my Shred Tribe cup and I fill it with water and ice and I put one scoop of my aminos, two scoops of my collagen and I'm out the door. And it helps support your muscles. So if you're not taking any kind of BCAAs, find one you like and definitely start taking it on a daily basis. Don't message me and say, do I take it before I work out? Do I take it after I work? It's not like that. You can drink it anytime you want. It's not a pre-workout. It's not a post-recovery. It's just something your body needs. I do it every single day. Um, so for some people, exercise becomes a compulsion. And I'm going to list off some things of how it might be a compulsion. You feel guilty or anxious. You do not exercise. Even if you're injured or sick, you still exercise. Exercise is no longer fun. You will cancel plans with friends, family, any social events so that you can work out. I feel like I'm listening to myself. Um, and guys, sorry, but you stopped getting your periods. This is me right here, by the way, <laughs> all of it. Um, but it's my job. And I try to support it with food and all everything else and any other fitness professional. Um, so I know Brian is more of an athlete. And he does fall into those categories, but he knows how to train his body and he knows how to take his recoveries and he knows what he needs to do. Right, Brian? Yeah, absolutely. I drink BCAAs. Um, I have a serving in the morning and the afternoon and the evening. Um, and yeah, drinking water all day long. I don't get, some days I'll get good sleep, but I, you know, I really have to just listen to my body because um, sometimes, you know, I'll push it to like the point of, um, being too much. And then I got to back it off. But I mean, like I have a race next weekend and I'm going to have to spend the next week, just tone it, taking it down. Um, so my body can recover so that I can be ready for that. Um, but yeah. So like, yeah. you know, when that when things are coming up, how to pull back so that you can give your body that recovery so that you're not over exercising up until that point. Yeah. And so I can be at my peak performance. Like right now, if I were to go to try and race, I wouldn't do as good as I would be able to because I've, you know, I've been bulking on that training and, uh, you know, developing that muscle and, and all that stuff. But then now is the time to just back it off, let myself heal, and then I'll be ready to go. Yep. Um, and that's kind of like what I do too, obviously, because um, it's my job. But um, yeah. so compulsive exercise could lead to eating disorders can lead to um, anxiety. It could lead to your um, bone and your muscle starting to break down. Um, over 50, you guys should be taking something for, even if you don't have the signs of it, of osteoporosis, something to keep your bones strong. You know, those little chocolates they sell and stuff. Um, my OBGYN has them in her office, his, their office, he and her, in like a jar. It's like a candy jar, but it's not. Um, I'll get the name of it and I'll put it in the amazing groceries find. Um, but that's something you guys, everybody should be having. Okay. So here we go. The health department said you should do some type of physical activity every day, ex every day, exercise just once or twice a week can reduce the risk of heart disease or stroke, but you need to do at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity activity a week or 75 minutes of vigorous activity a week. Spre not every day, sorry, when I said that over there. Spread exercise evenly over four to five days a week or every day. So if you divide 150 by 30, that's five days a week. But if you're doing high intensity for seven and you're doing it 75 minutes, like let's say um, a spin class, because um, that's more high intensity than an orange theory class, um, you want to limit that. Maybe two spin classes a week, maybe two to three orange theory classes a week, but you don't want to cap that. Orange theory, by the way, is not an hour, just so you all know. Orange theory is 46 minutes. So that's why I say a spin class is more high intensity because it's a straight hour of work if you're doing an hour ride. Um, so here's another thing. However, if your goal is to reduce your weight by 5% or more, this is the caveat, You've, you've, and you've lost a lot, or you've lost a lot of weight and now you want to keep it off. The health department has just sent this out. 
a minimum of 300 minutes a week of moderate to intensity to a higher intensity activity weekly may be needed. So everybody's different, but if you break down 300 by a one hour session, that's still five days a week. But if you're doing Orange Theory, 45 minutes, you, and you're doing other things, you need to make sure you get that 300 minutes if you are looking to lose 5% of your body fat or your weight, sorry, not body fat. Does everybody got that? So the first thing I read to you was the norm. And now the health department just came out. I just pulled it up. I'm gonna take a picture of this and I'm gonna put it in the group. But I'm going to read it again. If your goal is to reduce your body weight by 5% or more, or you've lost a lot of weight and want to keep it off, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services recently indicates that a minimum of 300 minutes of moderate intensity activity weekly may be needed. So now think about what we talked about over exercising. Maybe you're not over exercising, but maybe you're not getting enough sleep. Maybe you're not over exercising, but you're not getting enough water. Maybe you're not getting enough food. So you need to make sure of whatever you told me. And as we start the next session, if you change your fitness, you need to reach out to me and be like, listen, I said I was doing three hours, but I'm really doing six because I love it so much. And I'm having so much fun and Zumba and whatever. And um, I got that from Judith because I know she loves Zumba. Because we went to lunch while she was in the States from Canada. I got to meet her. It was really fun. Um, so you need to figure out how many minutes a week you are exercising and then work your body around that and whatever you're doing on a daily basis. So now I want to read something. Some great cardio aerobic exercises to help with belly fat. You can't spot train, remember? And you can't spot exercise. So there are things that will help you with certain things. So great cardio would be walking at a quick pace. If you have an iWatch or a Fitbit, when you go for walks outside and you message me and say, I went for a walk for an hour and you look at your watch and it's like an 18 minute mile, that's not, that's like a stroll. Your walking needs to be boom, 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 14 to 16 minute miles. Um, running, biking, rowing, swimming, cycling, or group fitness classes pretty much covers everything. Um, and then a 150 pound person would need to, I'm gonna tell you what these, I'm gonna read you about a 150 pound person and that the activities they would need to do to lose one pound of body fat. Running 40 minutes per day, walking two hours per day, vigorous swimming 40 minutes per day, cycling slash biking one hour per day, an intense aerobic exercise class one hour per day. And of course, that would bring you to your four to five days per week. So if your weight loss is slower and you wanna pick up that weight loss, you um, need to add more fitness in, or if you're doing too much, you need to bring it back. You know if you're going doing too much. In your heart of hearts, you know, oh, I am way over exercising. Or, you know what? I'm just doing Shannon's band workouts. I need to get my ass on my Peloton, or I need to get my ass walking around the house or outside. Or, soon you're not going to be able to do that, Stacey, because it's going to be snowing up to your ears. My sister lives up by Rochester, in Rochester, up by like Buffalo. So, um, this is the time to do it. Um, if you can't get out of your house and you don't want to buy expensive fitness equipment, I showed you guys all my little under the desk portable Stairmaster thingy ding. It's like $99 on Amazon. I'm not going to show you. Oh, my legs are so sore. Did you guys see it? It goes under your desk. It's not wanting to move, but you guys have all seen it before. Um, and it's very convenient. I think Lauren bought like two or three of them, kept one at her office at work, one at her desk at home. And if she didn't hit her steps, she would get on it to try and hit her steps. Um, but that's a great way to get your exercise when you're home or if you're sitting at a desk. Um, 
think about what you're doing. Is it doing you a disservice or is it helping you reach your goal? Or what do you need to do now to reach that goal? And it all comes down to also what you eat. Remember that, that's the most important. I just wanna read these messages really quick. Carter just said, water alone is not enough. None or some other supplement. Right, so none is in aminos. It's a branch chain amino. So it's the same thing. Um, oh, oh, Jody left, she had to go. Um, let me see if there's anything else. No, just my reminder, okay. Um, all right, so I want you guys to think about the over-exercising or maybe not exercising enough. And going into this next session, the majority of you are staying on. Um, I think there's like a handful that are taking a break. We're gonna have a lot of familiar names of people coming back. You're gonna be like, oh my God, I remember her. Danielle will be the first one to be like, wasn't she in here already? I'm like, yep, she's back. Um, so there are like probably 11 or 12 people returning that were here before the summer and now they're back in. Um, and you guys are always welcome back in, by the way. Um, so going into the next session, I, if you feel like you need to talk, you know, message me about your fitness, please do that because I want it to be, I want to dial in. I want you guys to be successful. I mean, everybody's killing it. So the numbers are amazing. This is probably one of the best challenges. And I don't remember if I said that last time, but this is one of the best challenges because everybody's like so focused, so committed. It's amazing. Um, and if things are not right, people are reaching out to me and I'm addressing it and we're changing numbers um, as we go. So I am going to let you guys go because I don't want to get cut off again. I, every time I get cut off on Wednesdays, I get so deflated because I don't get to say goodbye or anything. So um, I'm going to let you guys go. Plus I have a Zoom in two minutes. Um, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Please think about what we talked about tonight. And if, if it applies to you in any way, let's, let's address it. Let's talk about it. Um, and Saturday we have our workout. I'm actually gonna make it a little earlier because uh, we have an event to go to. So it might be four or 4.30. You know, it's always gonna be recorded, um, but we have to be at our club, I think at six or something. So um, I'll let you guys know that after I talk to Mike and find out what the schedule is with that. Otherwise, everybody have a great night. Remember, always be badass and um, reach out to me because I always wanna hear from you guys. Bye everyone, have a good night. Thank you so much for coming on tonight.